So, Cam Newton had an opinion about women, and some people got offended by it. And it's actually really bizarre to me, because his opinion was kind of the most uh, milk toast thing I think I've heard in a long time. That I'm not really even entirely sure how anyone could really find or take umbrage with it. Apart from the fact that anytime anyone puts any standard to young ladies, they get offended. Because, God forbid, we say young ladies should have any expectations at all. Can't have that, apparently. So anyway, let's play what Cam Newton said. And maybe you guys can find the, the evil misogyny and disgust in Cam Newton's words. Perhaps maybe I'm just too misogynistic myself to truly recognize what the issue here be. Bad bitch is a person who's just, you know, Girl, I'm a bad bitch. You know, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I, 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 I looked apart, but I don't act apart. Okay. You know, and it's a lot of women who are bad bitches. And I say bitches in, in, in a way not to degrade a woman, but just to, to, to go off the aesthetic of what they deem is a boss chick. Mm -hmm. Now, a woman for me is handling your own, but knowing how to cater to a man's needs, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of times when you get that aesthetic of like, I'm a boss bitch, like I'm a this, I'm a dad. No, baby, like, but you can't cook. Okay. You, yeah. don't, know, you don't know when to be quiet. You mm -hmm. don't know how to allow a man to lead. You know, I've seen a couple of people defend Cam Newton by saying that this is simply his preference. But the truth of the matter is, it's actually not. I mean, Cam Newton is actually not talking about what he prefers women to be. It's just what his perception of what makes a good woman is, which I don't really think is technically the same. Preferences are mostly, most of the time, kind of used to qualify a specific attraction to one type of person or another, while simply adhering to a standard of what it means to be a good ex is these different types of traits, which we've been doing about for men for thousands of years and we just never stopped doing from it. We just never at any point in time ever stopped saying that men have to do X, Y, and Z to be considered men. But for some reason it becomes quite the issue when we do it for young ladies. It's actually really, really bizarre. No matter how you slice it, even if you want to factor in, you know, feminism and just the liberals, so what so called agenda and whatnot, it just is a bit strange, no matter how you slice it that we can have men have so many different expectations that they have to adhere to in order to be accepted as young men. Bar none, just the physical expectations that we require of men, but also the monetary expectations and the social status and the looks as well. But the moment someone just says, you know, uh, ladies probably should have some type of understanding that they need to cater to the individual that they're trying to be with for some prolonged period of time. Why is it even bizarre to even say that if you're trying to convince someone to be with you for a long period of time, you should probably be appealing to be with. That seems to be a little bit common sense, but I guess not. Perhaps it's not that they're trying to be, or that they, women need to be appealing. I guess it's, I guess, well, well, okay, how about this? Maybe this lady will be able to explain to us exactly what the problem is. Go ahead. My one and only response to Cam Newton's interview, and if you didn't see it, here's the gist. Uh, you can only be a bad or a true woman if you fulfill a man's needs, okay? Um, let them speak, so, or, uh, and or, uh, you let them lead, okay? Fair enough. Uh, no, not fair enough. It's 2022, babe. Wake up. Also, you've got me met. Est up. If you think I am doing things for a grown ass man, he is fully capable of doing himself. Now, this is something that young ladies seem to just not be able to comprehend, and I don't really understand why. Like, I don't get why they believe that being in service and helping people and giving to people is somehow a position of weakness, or if not even a position of weakness, how like somehow it's an indictment of that person. You know, like from, from her words, I'm not gonna do anything if this grown ass man can do it himself. What, what happened to being kind? Like just because he can, let's just say cook his own food, or just because he can do his own laundry, just because he can clean X environment, or just because he can do all this different stuff, why does it mean that you can't help him? 
I mean, if you can do all of those things, I'm pretty sure, and a lot of women wrongly assume, that because they have the ability to do something, they don't need men around. And it's a sentiment I'll talk about some other time to make sure this video doesn't get too long, but it's just really, really is strange to me that that kindness is just not in their vocabulary, that somehow it's just wrong to do nice things for people. If you care about this person and you appreciate them, what's wrong with doing things for them from time to time? If even not time to time, just allocating that position to you. Again, if you have the expectation that someone has to give you their money to make sure that you live in a safe, comfortable environment, and that person's life is on the line? I don't understand what you're crying about when it comes to just like, I don't know, catering every now and again. If not generally speaking, considering the fact that you expect men to put their lives on the line. I married a man, not a baby. Thank you very much. I will be a great wife someday, believe that. Maybe a great ex-wife. But I am not at your every beck and call. You know why? Because I'm living my own life too, babe. Yeah, but there's a little bit of a problem here. I mean, once you get married to someone, it isn't your own life anymore. I mean, even if we want to obfuscate, you know, the biblical point of view that, that, that they shall leave their homes and the two shall become one flesh, it's like... You chose to be with this person, which is something that most humans didn't have the luxury to do. And it is remarkable to me just how hilariously spoiled the modern woman is. <laughs> I mean, hilariously in this point. Where they have the opportunity to be good and be virtuous. And instead they decide to spit in his face and say, I don't have to do anything. And any time there's any type of standards or expectations placed on me, I'm going to rage against the machine, even if they aren't actually inherently wrong. Not even inherently wrong. I mean, you kind of have to really make this a bad thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can understand that. Because the modern woman has been convinced that ladies of the past who were caterers to their men, the women that took care of the home, the women that cleaned, the women that cooked, the women that had children and raised them and taught them, that somehow that was some form of oppression and indictment. And any time that we even get to slightly approaching that, they um, it's like a sore spot and they, and they react, you know, violently to it. And it's interesting to me just how amazing the conditioning of the modern woman has been to that front. Because the truth of the matter is, you know, it, it, it's a very, really, really, really narrow and myopic view of, of, of the elements of how tough humanity, human life was in that time period. And, and shoot, even if you want to go to the brief time capsule that is the 50s, where this 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 lifestyle, you know, of, of the nuclear family was truly affordable, most of the time people lived in like networks with each other and helped each other out because they had to, because human life was hard. You know, it was mostly thanks to um, industrialization that allowed people to be able to earn salaries and kind of break apart into their own little units and whatnot. But in reality, you know, just, just life is tough. And even now, life can be really, really tough for people. It's, it's really remarkable that you don't see the value in just being able to help someone and have that someone help you back. Because in reality, you know, if you are too, if you pick a man that cares about you, then he's going to be helping you too, dumbass. You're not the only person there doing something. That is, of course, assuming you pick a man with integrity, but... We all know how difficult it is for ladies to do that, apparently. So, apparently, Brittany Renner, who actually ended up going um, to have two conversations with Cam on his YouTube channel, which I actually thought were pretty interesting, um, had some choice words to say as well. Let's give that a good listen to. I have spent my whole life putting others before myself in an attempt to show that I'm worth it. You know, the interesting thing is I actually used to do the same thing too. And it's kind of remarkable to me the the difference in split that we have become, especially considering the hilarious amount of economic success that Brittany Renner has and the lack of economic success that I have. Seeing that she's in a much better position to continue to put other people before herself and be gracious and kind, and I am not, and yet I still highly value it, and she doesn't. She especially particularly doesn't do so in regards of having sexual relations with men. And there's obvious there's an obvious reason as to why that be the case that I'll get into in a moment. But I just think that it is funny that I mean I did the same thing too and I'm not jaded at all despite the fact that 
I worked really hard to prove myself worthy for the young ladies I wanted to have in my life. And it meant absolutely nothing to them. But despite the fact that I understand that, it still doesn't mean that I, I shouldn't be a good man to a lady. A lady, you know, specifically. This awareness that I've been in ever since I decided to follow my heart and accept whatever comes behind it is about me tending to my garden, putting Brittany first. You don't get to come in here and kick up dirt in my garden or say it's not a real garden if it doesn't have a... I have nothing to prove to you. I no longer am, am running around after butterflies trying to get them to come to my garden. If you don't understand my value, maybe it's not for you to get. I'm gonna be honest, dude. Young lady strives so hard to have the things men have. But absolutely cannot be us, huh? Like, <laughs> I find it interesting. You know, like, having to, to prove yourself worthy to a young lady is just the natural disposition of being a man. And I find it very interesting how as men, we have to constantly, you know, face this battle um, and, and deal with this reality. And the only, the best we're kind of told is, figure it out. Because <laughs> no young man could ever could ever have this position and be taken seriously. You call it a MGTOW, a man sent his own way, an incel, a misogynist. They don't find any pejorative they want to throw at this dude. But see, this is the thing that kind of really bothers me. Because the truth of the matter is, a young man probably still shouldn't have the same sentiment. If you're going to be trying to bind someone's life to yours, it probably would make sense that you, you, maybe not society, but like you give something to them, that you give them some kind of reason. And, and to be honest with you, even if you do give them a particular reason as to why you're an absolutely phenomenal human being that they should be with, most of the time, especially in our generation, if you're just not attractive, you're just not handsome, if you're just not pretty, game, set, match. It doesn't matter how wonderful you are as a person. If you don't tickle their fancies, it's over. The interesting thing to me is the fact that, you know, in an environment that is so hilariously picky and shallow, that we're still inundated with these messages, particularly from ladies, that there's something greater or grander than their value, than their traditional feminine role. Which, whatever it is, I don't really seem to get it because oftentimes the only other value that they're usually talking about are their, their ambition and their economic success, but they don't really want to use their ambition and economic success to help young men have lives and protect them. I mean, they want all of the status that came with traditional masculinity, but they don't want any of the responsibilities of being leaders and protectors, which does beg an interesting question as to why they fight so hard to, to gain it, but I digress. You know, the thing that's remarkable to me about this mindset is the fact that a lot of young ladies, and young men too, but young ladies, don't seem to grasp one of the most important lessons just in life in general, and particularly in having relationships with other people. And this is actually something I've wanted to talk about for quite some time. Um, you know, uh, Doctor Strange became one of my favorite Marvel movies of all time, actually. Well, Spider-Man 2 is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe now, so I guess it's my second favorite. I'm kidding. You know, it's interesting. Because I've only ever seen people kind of talk about this like a few times, but it just, to me, it was, it was one incredibly powerful lesson that um, occurred when when Strange was talking to the Ancient One. You know, for those of y'all who haven't seen the movie, I mean, don't worry. Uh, I'm just gonna play the clip for you guys. No. Yes? I never saw your future, only its possibilities. You have such a capacity for goodness. You always excelled, but not because you craved success but because of your fear of failure. That's what made me a great doctor. It's precisely what kept you from greatness. Arrogance and fear still keep you from learning the simplest and most significant lesson of all. Which is? It's not about you. And you know, honestly, I don't even think you need the greater context of the story of Doctor Strange to be able to understand how important a life lesson that is. 
I mean, you know, I say all the time, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. You know, sometimes I say, you know, if you can do good things for people, you know, you've got an obligation to do those things. Not choice. Responsibility. I mean, I could say all those different goofy superhero cliche things, but the reality is, even if you don't have mystical special superpowers, that sometimes, sometimes, it's not about you. Sometimes it's not about what you can get for someone else. It's about what you can give to someone else. And if that person has integrity, if that person loves you, if that person cares about you, they're going to see you give to them. And then they'll say, wow, that was really kind. And then give back to you, provided if they can. And shoot, sometimes that kindness is what propels people to want to do better and help you. And sometimes it doesn't. But the truth of the matter is, even if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you become a cold person that is honestly just downright unappealing of an individual to have a relationship with. It means that you fight to find individual people that have the integrity to appreciate you. See, the thing that's really goofy to me is this is a really, really arrogant position that I mostly see from a lot of black ladies, but honestly, like, the, the real liberal promiscuous woman also seems to have this mindset too, that they shouldn't do anything for men. And now again, it's hilariously goofy that they have expectations that men do things for them, but God forbid there's any reciprocity there. But more important than that, it's also just hilariously illogical. Just the logic of convincing people to be with you would probably imply that you should be doing something to convince them to come around. And sure, I could talk about all day and all night about how a lot of these women end up getting ran through by men like Cam Newton. I mean, Cam might be kind of closest to the best, but like, make no mistake, high value males oftentimes are not individuals who are truly defined by their morality and their integrity and honor to their personal relationships or any relationship they have for that matter. The thing that's interesting to me, and there's actually lots of things that are interesting, but what becomes remarkably goofy is it's not even just that Cam didn't really even say anything that was egregious. It's just the fact that these women are so arrogant and selfish, they don't recognize that sometimes life isn't about you. It's about the things you can do for other people. And men have an hilariously powerful capacity to love women in spite of the fact that sometimes they're just a downright burden. That's a whole video topic unto itself I'll have to get into. But to summarize this video here, lots of people are calling Cam misogynistic for this. And the only reason why this is misogynistic is because it just comes really, really close to the traditional, I guess, role or values that people placed upon women or assumed that young women had in the past. Now, it becomes really goofy when you consider that none of these women lived through that time period. So why are they so offended by it? Table that discussion for some other time too. But the reality being is that there is just a reciprocity to what men are and what men give. And a lot of women have become spoiled by modernity because they don't recognize how difficult providing really is, how difficult being a leader truly is, until unfortunately, they become single mothers. And even then, they become so jaded and bitter that some of them still never come to stop and recognize that maybe it's not about them. It's about the life that they were supposed to provide to those other people and the life and relationship they were supposed to provide to the men that they chose to have. It's interesting to me that the modern woman has become so selfish and so arrogant that she can't stop and see that if you're going to ask someone to be in your life, you should probably make it an appealing proposition. Because being a jerk probably, most definitely, ain't the vibe here. And it's really goofy that these women somehow find umbrage with the fact that Cam Newton was saying, don't be a jerk. Be someone that someone wants to be around. You've got no issue saying that to young men. So why is it such a problem to say to young women? With that being said, I actually hope you guys got something out of today's video. I highly doubt you did. But if you did, you know, go ahead and click the like button. And shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. We'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.